Hello and a big welcome back to the Korean Beauty Show podcast. I'm your host, Lauren Lee, K-beauty expert, long-term resident of Seoul, South Korea, the founder of Style Story, where you can shop, learn and explore the world of Korean beauty, and of course, the founder of K-beauty brand, Jellico. So on today's episode, I wanted to do something that I'm not sure whether we've actually done before, and that is to do a little bit of a wrap up of some of the more under the radar K-beauty products that you might want to try. And what sort of brought this on is that as I'm flicking through, uh, you know, TikTok and social media these days, even articles, you know, I, I get a lot of articles, people tag me in things, I get sent a whole lot of stuff about, you know, K-beauty product roundups. And I'm not sure if you guys feel the same, but honestly, it is the same product seemingly in every single post. Uh, And, you know, I just don't think that there's anyone out there that hasn't already heard of, for example, the COSRX now Mucin Essence that wants to try it that hasn't already. Like, it's been on the market for so many years at this point. The Dr. Jark Color Correcting Cream, Kahi's Multi Balm, like, they are very, very well covered. But I thought, why don't we take a look at some products that just aren't so hyped, but I think absolutely deserve to be. And some of these are not just my personal picks, they are picks from our customers. Products that people absolutely rave about and they say, this is the best thing ever, I've told all my friends about it, but that, you know, in the mainstream just don't get a lot of airtime. So let's take a look at some of them. And the first one that I think I hear this feedback the most about is April B's Collagen Peptide Moisture Cream. This product is an absolute favorite of those in the know. It's a really luxurious anti-aging cream and it is infused with hydrocolized hydrocolized I'm just inventing ingredients hydrolyzed collagen peptides hyaluronic acid and niacinamide it it literally has so many things that I would put in an anti-aging formula if I were going to make a product like this other things it's got in it sea buckthorn you guys know I absolutely love that it's got adenosine beta glucan it's just a tick list of all of these ingredients that absolutely belong in a really thick, luxurious anti-aging cream. And the reason I use the term anti-aging cream is because this product really does fit that classic anti-aging style formula. And by that, what I mean is it cares for all of the concerns for mature skin. And that is things like fine lines starting to show up, the skin starting to dry out more, all of the kind of things that as we get older, as we lose our own natural collagen, our our firmness and elasticity, we can get a little bit of a boost from the products that we apply. And that's not to say that by applying collagen topically, you will replenish your own collagen levels, because unfortunately, that's not really how it works. But what it does do is give your skin this beautifully nourished hydrated appearance that can give you that plumper look so that the skin looks more smooth and refreshed and this product honestly I recommend it to anyone in their 40s and above 40s 50s 60s I think this is such a beautiful product and everybody that tries it seems to fall in love with it that is the consistent feedback that we get over and over again. People recommend it to their mum. They recommend it to their aunt, to their friends. People really, really love this product, but I still don't see it talked about that often. I'm pretty sure a couple of years ago, it won one of our in-house Best of K-Beauty awards. And that's because it's a little bit of a cult favorite among our customers, but I don't see it getting the love that it deserves on a big scale. So this one is definitely one of those under the radar products to try if you're after a product like that. It comes in an absolutely huge jar. It is great bang for buck. I'll pop the links to all of these products in the show notes in case you're interested in checking any of them out. But this one, honestly, if you haven't tried it already and you fall into that age group, try it and let me know what you think, because this one, I think, deserves way more hype than it actually gets. Now, the second product on my list is a product from a brand that is very, very famous in Korea, 
But I literally almost never see talked about outside Korea, certainly not in English speaking media. And that is Charm Zone. So they have an absolutely massive collection of products. There would be, I, I would say most Koreans would be familiar with this brand. They don't just do cosmetics. In the height of the pandemic, they were doing really luxe face masks as well, as in like the COVID style face masks, not sheet masks. Uh, and it's a very well known brand with a lot history. It doesn't get much airtime overseas, but they have some really, really great products. And one that I think exemplifies this is their de-age retinol emulsion. So they have a whole de-age retinol line, which is actually when it came out, was still quite rare for Korean beauty. This was before the latest wave of products. You know, a lot of brands at the moment are doing releases with retinol in them, pretty much all of the major brands that, that sell overseas. But this is a really lightweight facial lotion. It's designed specifically with dry and mature skin in mind. It is filled with retinol and niacinamide, and it's perfect for smoothing out the appearance of fine lines and skin tone as well. And again, this product gets rave reviews. Pretty much everyone that tries it is like, wow, I absolutely love this. I really want to try it again. And I just don't see it talked about like in the mainstream. And it is one of those products that once people have tried it, they're That is the consistent feedback. They're like, oh, my God, love it. Definitely need more. You know, it really improved the appearance of my pores. It it left my skin really soft. All of those kind of things that you would want. It it didn't dry my skin out. It leaves it nice and plump and soft. So I think that brand in general, probably because they do do so well locally in Korea, maybe they just don't need to look overseas you know, as much as some of the other brands that where where, where their main markets are overseas. But this one, I think, is a really hidden gem. If you do have dry, mature skin, I think you will love this one as well. And some of the ingredients, obviously, I already touched on. So it actually uses, they use a type of uh, double encapsulated retinol, as well as some other really great anti-aging style ingredients like adenosine, which is a skin soothing and restoring agent, glycerin, which is great for hydration, and niacinamide as well, which will work for those enlarged pores and fine lines. Now, another product that I feel like is a favorite of people in the know but really gets no airtime is Tosawong's Spot Whitening Vita Clinic Cream. And we've had this product on our website for years and it's a really, really beautiful product. Uh, A lot of people that try it are blown away by the texture of it. It's a very unique texture because the vitamin C in it actually comes from sea buckthorn extract. And sea buckthorn, if you're not familiar with it, it's a little orange berry and it is a natural source of vitamin C. So 200 times more vitamin C than apples and 30 times more than lemons. And this formula actually also contains ethyl ascorbic acid, which is a stable form of vitamin C that gives really great results. It's got a better stability profile than some of the direct acting forms of vitamin C. Uh, The texture of this is very unique because at first blush, it kind of feels dense and sticky almost, but then it's really quickly absorbed by the skin and it doesn't leave you with this greasy or heavy feeling. Almost it turns buttery is the best way that I can think to uh, describe it. And again, this is a product that people literally, when they're giving their reviews, rave about it. Like words are used like holy grail, best K-beauty product ever. I think it's really, really underrated by people because they don't know about it. Uh, And again, Tosung is one of these brands. I, you know, it has been a brand for a very long time that has been known of in the K-beauty world, but has always kind of not gotten the attention that it deserves. And I'm not entirely sure why. I would say probably in the mid 2010s, they had a couple of products that people absolutely raved about. The um, the enzyme powder wash was one of them. Uh, another one was the Propolis Sparkle Ample, two products which are very steady sellers for the brand. They still sell them to this day. We actually s- s- sell both of those products still on our website, and they're very popular. 
But it's not the kind of thing that I ever see popping up on like TikToks or Instagram posts or YouTube channels or whatnot. And I'm not entirely sure why. They definitely do not do a whole bunch of marketing overseas in English. Even if you have a look at their Instagram channel, it's pretty much dead and has been for years. We've sold their products. We've worked with them for many, many years. And they have a really strong stable of steady sellers that they don't really touch too significantly. They've made minor adjustments over the years to, for example, the Enzyme Powder Wash. Uh, they changed the packaging to that uh, based on feedback that the packaging wasn't as robust. They removed a couple of ingredients like badger oil, but you know, for all intents and purposes, the formula has stayed the same. And this is another product that people that try it always come back from most people are on to, if I had to go back through, I would say their third or fourth tub at least. And people that try it are, are blown away by it. But I just don't see the same people, you know, screaming about it from the rooftops. And I think this is the cynic in me coming out. But I have a feeling that the reason that a lot of people are screaming about some products from the rooftops is because they've been gifted them, right? They've been given them for free by the brand, maybe in exchange for a post or a review or something like that. And, you know, not that there's anything wrong with that, like it's a business, obviously, but I think that then can kind of distort the products that people hear about, you know, because if you're only ever hearing about the ones that have absolutely huge marketing budgets, you're not going to hear about the more niche products. Products. Uh, and, you know, is this niche? Well, I guess it is in terms of K beauty overseas. I mean, Tosun back in the day was big enough that they used to take out ads on buses here in Korea. So, you know, they're not a tiny brand, but in terms of the marketing budget that they would allocate for their global and overseas, no, like probably it's not a priority for them. So some of these products that I'm going to introduce you to today, I definitely think fall into that category. One product that you may have heard of, I'm not sure, it is trending at the moment in Korea, and I think it might blow up, but it's a little bit too early to tell, overseas, is Mixun's Bean Essence. And funnily enough, the reason that this product is really trending is because a lot of people are saying it performs very similarly to COSRX's snail mucin essence. So they're saying if you are looking for a vegan alternative or a snail free alternative, you know, even though that product is cruelty free, it still does contain um, the trails of the snail that, you know, they leave behind when they're sort of, uh, I don't know, what would you call the movement of a snail? sliming along <laughs> I don't know whatever you want to call that movement that they make that's what they're collecting it's the part left behind as opposed to crushed snails but you know there are some people that have a problem with that and so for those people that lack the benefits uh, particularly you know for boosting elasticity for promoting a healthier skin barrier for brightening up the appearance of dull looking skin a lot of those people are really enjoying this product as a good alternative to it it is quite popular domestically but I think it's just the beginning so you know I think it remains to be seen whether this product will take off in a big way overseas or not but at present I think overseas it's probably a bit underrated considering how popular it is so that one's mixed Soon's bean essence. Now, another one that I personally think is underrated, and I will go into some detail because I feel like I'm going to need to explain myself for this one, but bear with me a minute. I think that Skin 79 BB creams in this day and age remain underrated, and this is why I think that. I know that people that were familiar with K-Beauty in the 2010s are probably like, Lauren, what the hell are you talking about? These products have been famous for years. And it's true that in the first wave of K-Beauty that really took off overseas, these products got so much airtime. Like people that didn't even know about K-Beauty knew about the pink BB cream, the hot pink BB cream. However, I'm going to attempt a justification of my opinion for this and say that I believe to this day they remain some of the best formulas on the market and I think they get drowned out among a whole sea of other products of new stuff that comes onto the market. And how do I know this? Two reasons. I still, to this day, do use Skin79's Pink BB Cream and I also try pretty much all of the new stuff that comes on the market. Like, 
I always make a point of going and checking out the latest cushions, the latest BB creams or whatnot that get released uh, on the Korean market because I'm forever looking for something that might top them. And with very few exceptions, none of the products that I find even come close in terms of the coverage, in terms of correcting marks and dark spots, which, you know, if you don't have an absolutely flawless complexion, you're kind of looking for that when it comes to your base makeup, your foundation or your BB cream. You would like to get rid of them. And what I have noticed is that so many of the new products that come out on the market do not offer that level of coverage. They might give you a really nice glowy, dewy look, but if you do not already have perfect skin with zero pores, with zero redness, with zero marks or bumps, then it's really hard to find a level of coverage that works. And even though, you know, tapping on additional product in K-Beauty BB creams won't normally give you that cakey look, it's not the same thing as proper coverage. I still think these formulas kill it when it comes to that long-lasting makeup that gives you a nice finish, it covers up all of your, you know, imperfections, which, let's face it, that's why we're putting on BB cream most of the time. Uh, I mean, it does have the SPF 50 in it, not that I would recommend relying on that for your sun protection because, of course, this is just makeup, it's not sunscreen, but it does it all. They come in a really compact, hygienic, friendly-sized container that is very efficient to use. I don't think I've ever had any issues, even though they use the um, the airless pump, the airtight pump. I've never had problems with them. And it's just the same thing cannot be said for so many BB formulas on the market these days. Uh, so many of them are just no good. And when I was in Dubai, I even had the chance to pick up a whole bunch of the Western products that are in the market um, at Sephora at the moment. And honestly, I thought they were just crap. Like, I've used them. I've tried to force myself to use them a handful of times, and they're just no good. They don't look any good. They don't cover anything up. They make my skin look strange. Like, honestly, just no good at all. Like, if I thought some of the ones that are coming out in Korea at the moment were ordinary, these were even worse than that. So I'm going to stand firm with my opinion. I understand that the shade range is definitely a problem. I get that. This is Korean BB creams that we're talking about. After all, shade range, pretty much non-existent. You know, I think, so Skin79 actually does have a couple of shades, (laughs) a couple of shades, that's not saying much, darker than a lot of other Korean BB creams will have. But it's an improvement on a lot of brands, which literally have two, shade 21 and shade 23. They at least have a bronze one that suits a lot more, you know, skin variations than compared to the regular shade 21 and 23. They also have one that's equivalent to a shade 13 as well. And they have a few different undertones as well, beige and pink, which not all brands do. So look, shade range admittedly acknowledged it's not the best. I still think that these hold up against other BB formulas on the market. Like one of our customers left a review for the product, uh, would have been maybe a year or two ago now, and she said, I every time I buy this, I stock up on like two or three because I'm so scared that they'll stop making it. And that's honestly kind of how I feel. Uh, so look, It's a golden oldie, yes, but I don't think they get as much airtime as they deserve in 2023. I still think they are really, really good. And if you haven't tried them or if you haven't tried them for a while, I would recommend it. Honestly, I think they live up to their reputation. Now, the last product that I personally think deserves uh, a little bit more of a cult status, but it hasn't quite got there yet, is our very own Jelly Co. Cinnamon Toast Sugar Scrub Foam. So this one is our two-in-one. It's a 100% customizable cleanser and exfoliant. So you can basically choose how you like to use it at every single routine. If you want to use it as just a a pure cleanser, you can dissolve the sugar crystals in your palms first and then just apply the foam left over to a wet face. But if you want to use it as an exfoliant, you can just apply it as it is to a damp face and massage it in really gently. And it gets, this is a very popular product in New York at the moment. Uh, I think a lot of people there seem to get it, but 
I personally think in Australia, it's still uh, not one of our top selling products. And I honestly think that it deserves a little bit more love because who doesn't love sugary cinnamon treats? It really does smell like cinnamon toast. Uh, And afterwards, after you use it, your skin is left feeling refreshed and smoothed. We get a lot of feedback from people who are really surprised about it. They're like, oh, I was a bit worried about this. Like, I don't use scrubs. I think scrubs have gotten such a bad reputation in the meantime. Uh, And very undeservedly so, because there's a wide variety of different products out there on the market. Uh, From, you know, the the one that we all probably love and remember made from, uh, is it walnut shells, I'm pretty sure, all the way through to, you know, ones that are a lot more gentle, environmentally friendly, they don't contain microbeads or any of that sort of thing. So I personally think that of all of our products, this one deserves a little bit more love, but I'm happy to hear that when people do try it, they're like very surprised that it was good and that they didn't, I think the sad part is that they didn't think it would be. That's the sad part, right? Like it is good, I, be, I promise it's good. So this one I think deserves a little bit more love. I'm happy to see that it's a popular product in New York, but it always makes me a little bit sad that this one doesn't get as much love as the other ones because the moisturizer is just like, I feel like a lot of people have tried that. I mentioned before on the show that that one is the one that people are like, oh, the reviews are too good to be true. Like they must be fake. No one would leave all of these good reviews. Uh, and they're definitely not. But this product is the one that I think people are like a little bit more on the fence about. So I personally think that this one is a little bit underrated. I think that it is. I think that if when, when people give it a chance that they are surprised by it. But I just wanted to introduce some of the more under the radar ones that I have been noticing at the moment. Uh, And that's just on the basis of like feedback from people like in my circle from customers and things like that, that when they try these products, they're like, why haven't I heard of this one before? Uh, And I think there's a whole lot of reasons why products become famous and other ones sort of fly under the radar. I remember I was having a conversation with someone the other day and talking about offline stores. And she was like, oh, well, when they try it and they see how good it is. And I was like, no, 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 that's not how it works. Like the buyers don't care what the product is. A lot of the time they won't even try it. Like it could be anything. All they want to know is that the product is going to sell well on the shelf. Like the product could literally be anything. It could have the worst reviews ever on Online. But if people are coming into the store and buying it, that's all they want to know. And she was really shocked to hear that. She was like, what do you mean they don't care if it's a good product or not? And I was just like, I don't know how to explain it to you. Like I've had so many conversations with so many buyers and that is just not, they're not thinking in those terms. They want to know, you know, can they put it in the clean section or can they put it in the TikTok viral section or what is the selling point? It being a good product is a moot point. Like nobody cares. Uh, So that's kind of shocking information maybe for people that don't work in the beauty industry, but it's true. Like the stuff on the shelves is not necessarily there because it's awesome. A lot of the time it's there because the brand behind it has the right marketing budget to push it. Or, you know, it's just one of those products that everyone's heard of. You know, those kind of products that have just been like around for years and years and years. And it's like, oh, such and such as mum used that. So like, it must be good. How many of those products are on the shelves? Like so many. It's just like they've always been there. People come in looking for it because if they are looking for, I don't know, a a fragrance or a moisturizer, that's at least something that they've heard of. That's the majority of stuff on the shelves. It's not necessarily there because it's the best thing ever. And that's the other reason why I personally really like to find niche brands, even in Korea. I get honestly quite bored just cruising through the offline stores because none of it is particularly uh, new or inventive a lot of the time. It's just what's selling at the moment because it's the stuff that people are buying. So I actually really like to go online and have a look and find products that no one else, you know, has heard about that maybe are a little bit more difficult to buy. Case in point, a new eyelash serum. So I was recommended uh, a product by my lady that does my my tint. 
uh, for my eyelashes. And she recommended me this product and it turned out to be absolutely awesome. And then I went and tried to get it and literally couldn't get it anywhere because it's like one of those niche products that only people in the know know about. So there's so many products like that in Korea as well. And I think that explains why, you know, there's always this debate about what's trending overseas versus Korea, but there's literally too many products. Like not even everyone in Korea would know what products are out there. So these are just a few that I personally think are absolutely banging products that I'm pretty sure if you fall into the the right category in terms of the skin type that they're targeting, that you will actually be really surprised by, but that I don't see getting a lot of love. So you'll have to let me know if you enjoyed this episode, if this is the kind of you know episode that you would like to hear more of, make sure you leave some feedback, leave a review. And also just a reminder that we are having our epic end of financial year sale at the moment. There are so many bargains, literally even stuff under 10 Australian dollars. Really, really cheap stuff. We've got people shopping with us from New Zealand, from the States that are just like, what the hell is going on here? There are so many good deals. So if you haven't already checked it out, go and head over to stylestory.com.au and grab yourself a literal bargain. We also have an entire section called buy one, get one free, which is that you pay the full price for the one product and we'll throw in a second one for free. Uh, We need to clear out that warehouse ASAP, if not before, because we don't want to have to count all of our stock. So um, help us, help us, please. (laughs) All right, I'm going to finish up here for this week. I will be back in your ears next week. And until then, I will see you on Style Story.